So we created a book class that has three variables, title, author, ISBN, and a default constructor called book. Do you understand how this default constructor? The name is exactly the same name as the class, and it has nothing inside it. Okay, so this is uh, one. We can create another constructor down here, which again public, book, the same, but it has some parameters inside. One string, we'll call it title, comma, another string, we will call it author. Okay, and open bracket, close bracket. So there are now two constructors so far. Two constructors. The first one is just default, and the other one has parameters. Now we need to use those parameters here <coughs> to set the value of title and author. Yeah? So these two things here with lowercase, I will use them to set the value of this one and this one. So what I will write here, the, the, the variable author, author, will be equal author, will be equal author, lowercase, semicolon. Okay, the title, the sequence is not important, will be title. Now what the difference between those two things? The one with author, O-R, O-R. Okay, very good. Now, this constructor, Shabab, do you understand what this constructor does now? This constructor received from the user two values. One is the title, one is the author. Yeah? So the user will specify these two. It will use these two to set the value of these two here, which will be author with a uppercase equal author lowercase. Means this one here will be equal to this one. This one here will be equal to this one. So this now will create an object with an author name and title. Okay? Now let's do just one more uh, method which will display the book details. Yeah? And then we'll come back to the others. So let's come here and say public. Public void. Book details, okay? And this one, what we'll do, it will print system dot out dot print ln and we'll print here book title colon space plus title. Okay, very good, and semicolon at the end. And then we'll display also, we'll do another one. Here, uh, book author, author. We'll make this our case just to look nice. It doesn't make difference, this one. Now, this is good. So, Shabab, are you with me? No, sir. Now, this, there are so far two things we did, yeah? Three things. First thing, we put some attributes to the book or variable. Then we created a default constructor with the same name. It's like a method, but the same name as the book name. And there is nothing inside. We can look at it later. And then we created another one, the same, but we passed two parameters inside it. And we used those parameters to set the value. Then we created a method that we can call it to display the details of the book. And we call that one book details. It doesn't receive any parameter, but later we can make it receive parameters, but we don't need now. But it basically displays the title and the author. 
Now we created a class. How we can create an object of that class and then start working with that object? We will do this in the main class. We, do it. we have two classes here. Yeah, no matter what is the main, what is the book we create. You notice the book class name should match the, fi the file name, should match exactly the file name. If it's lowercase, lowercase, uppercase, uppercase. Otherwise, it will not work. We need to match that. Now, we need to go to the main class and do some work there. Yeah. So let me go to the main class, and we will create object. Now, before I go to the main class, I need one of you to tell me what did you notice the difference between the constructor and the method. Now, what did you, what what is the difference you noticing between a constructor and a method? Meaningfully, surely that. What did you notice, Matan? What did you notice the difference between a constructor and a method? This one is a method. Yeah? This one is a method. This one is a constructor. One thing we already know the constructor has the same name as the class name. What else? Another difference. What's the difference here and here? Huh? <coughs> Boy? The constructor does not use void. Yeah, remember that one. In the constructor, you do not use void. Yeah, because the constructor will never return value. The, the purpose of the constructor is to create an object in the memory of the computer. And that's it. And keep it there. Yeah? So void, there is no void here. Yeah? That's one. In the, in the method, it can be void, it can be empty, it can be anything. Object. Okay? Now in the main class, which I'm here now, let's remove this print out and this is our main class, yeah? Now we need to create an object. So how we create an object? Who can tell me? What should I type now? Shabab. Book. Very good. So I say book. Book our case. This one is the class. So you need to have the class name. Then, then uh, the name of the <coughs> we'll call it book one. Then, uh, new. new, very good. Book. book. Okay. Then the parameters you need to pass. So we'll pass here the book one title. Book one, we'll call it. And the author will call it HY. This is the author. I'll give him a good name. Salim, where is Salim? Salim is the author. So we created one book now. Let's create another book. How we do that? How we create another book? We just copy this line, put it down. Now we change this one to be book two. And we'll call it introduction, introduction to Java. Let's have a good book name. Okay, and who is the author? Who is doing something? Okay, and this way now we can create so many books. Yeah? <coughs> now we can create so many books of the same class. Yeah? Now we can create so many books of the same class. But, but this one here we're doing, yeah? We are sending this information to the main class, to the constructor that we call this person. Now if I want to see book one details, how I do that? See, this is the object oriented, yeah? You need to have the object name first. So book one dot book details. It came automatic. Now book two, then book details. Yeah. So this way now, what I did, 
I created two objects of the book, two objects of the book, and then I display the details of book one and book two. If you run this one, you will just get those details that we have in the in the in the book. So basically, it displayed the first book, which book one, and the author is seven, and book two something, and then the author is now, if I want to format this and make it look nice, where should I do that? Huh? I want to format this one and make space between them. Where I do this format? In the class. Yeah. See, all the work you do in the class. The main one is just display the data. Yeah? So I need to go to the class if I want to format it. So the class book here last book here, yeah. We will format it. Let's add some line, empty line here. So system, system dot out dot print new line. And let's add some, something here. Looks like this, semicolon. We will add another one down here. <coughs> and we can make it maybe even better by putting a new line here. Okay, so there's some space between this <coughs> box. See, now it came nice. Why don't I make this one a little bit bigger so you can see it? So you can see now, I want to do anything. With the, with the format, I need to go to the main class. Uh, not, the, not the main class, I only need to go to the class that I use, use that one. Now, assume I want to change uh, the book title, okay, of, of any book. I can add another method here. Let's do one set method. Let's say public void. English calling me. Oh, listen, avoid set title, title, and we'll pass to it string title lowercase. Now, this I can use now. I'll show you what that means. So we can say title, title equal lowercase title semicolon. Okay, title, yes. Now this additional method I added now, I want you to understand it. Where is it? Let's take it up a little bit so you can see it properly. So we added a method called set title. I remember the way we named a method lowercase, then uppercase. Yeah? And this set title, if you want to set the title, you need to supply the title. So we're supplying the title here, and then we're setting title here. So this method will help us set the title. Set usually, yeah? Set usually doesn't, uh, should have void. Get should have value. Later we'll show you one there now. Now let's use this one and go back to the main, to the main class, and let's change book one, say book one, dot set title, sorry, set title, and we change the title, title, and we change the title to this is the best book. Huh? Rich dad, poor dad. Remember that book? Okay. Now if we do that and again call the details of book book one, here I come. So what I did now, if I run the code, watch what will happen. Shabab, be with me, please. Look at this. So first, we created two books and we displayed this line here. This line created the first book, book one, in the memory of the computer. And we can display anything. 
discuss creating the memory. Second one, creating another book in the memory of the creator. Now, when we came here, we use the method book details of book one. It displays book one details. When we use book two, book details, it displays the details of book two. Okay? Now we said, let us change. Let us change the title of book one. So we said, book one, set title, and we change it to something like this. And we said, display book one. We display book one. So what happened? Came the new title. So book one, no more is book one only. Now has a new title. So using set method, you can change the variable of an object to anything you would like to change. Yeah? So if you look back to the class to understand it, here is the class that supports it. Yeah. The set method basically is usually public. You can have it private. It's private needs to be reset from the same class. Set usually both. That's the common thing. But sometimes it can be. Then void, why void? Because we're not returning anything. The get will return. The word key will create now will get uh, in, in a method. Okay. So that set will receive a parameters or more than one parameters. So usually it's one by one. You set the title, then you set it. You don't set many of they, they can, technically they can. Okay. Usually it's related to only one parameter. So we pass into that parameter title. It will take that title and change the object title to the new title. I'm using lowercase and uppercase just to know. Lowercase is what I'm passing, uppercase is the main. Let's create a git one now to understand better. So let's create one here. We will call it public, public string. Why string? Because it will return the title, yeah? So get title, and I'll pass no parameters there. The only I need to do is return title. So this is a get method. Here is a get method. The get method, the objective of the get method is to go to the object, and because the variable is private, it will get the value and send it to the coder. <coughs> and get usually you need it if the variable is private. This is probably because you need it. Let's create one now, I'll show you. But for private variable, because the title is private, there is no way I can access it unless I create a git method that the user can call to send him that. Is that the yeah. yeah, go ahead. Is that the right set of objects to the public class? Set of objects to the public class? No, no. Just some, if you're dealing with Title. Yeah, this is called get title. Uh, in 
now in the, from the main class. So in this case, I will call the title of book two, yeah? So how I do that, I basically say system dot out dot brand line, and then we'll say title, title, okay, I'll put space here. And then here I can say get, Oh, sorry, book two, book two dot get title. I have to explain this one. Now, I want, when I say this line basically, it will display the title of book two. But the way it works, it has to use the object, then the method that give you, give you that answer. Let's run this one, you will see what that means now. Let's do here, and run this one, and give us more space here to look at it. See, back to what we did. We created the object forever, I, mean, I should bring this one little down, so you can see it. Let's come from here. Mm. Okay. So, back. We created book one, we created book two, each one we gave them the parameters that they need. Then we displayed uh, book one, came book one here. We displayed book two, book two came here. Then we set book one title to this new book. From book one, it was to, to this book. Then we display the details of book one. So book one details came here. This book one details. The new one. Now what we did, we said, get us this one. Say, get us book two title. Book two title, we know it's introduction to programming. But when you say, get us book two title, we receive book two title. Yeah? We used it inside inside uh, inside uh, system out, which may be a little bit confusing to you. But let me rewrite this one a li little bit different. So let me delete this one and say uh, title, yeah? We'll say equal book to get title. Yeah. This title we'll call it string, or we'll call it only T, it's because you have up title, we don't get confused. So now you, what I did here, Shabab, I just created a new variable, I call it T, okay, and I called book two title. So this T now will store book two title, okay? Let me display it and I'll come to you. Then we will say system dot out dot print ln. We'll say title title colon space plus t semicolon. Very good. Now here is. So the last thing what I did, created a variable for T. I asked book two to get me its title. So I used the method get title. It returned its title. We stored it in T, and then we displayed it. Yes.
Okay, so what we will do, I will delete كل هاي الكلام اللي هنا. Huh? All this we will delete. Huh? Let's we delete. We'll delete. يلا. Let's delete. Do you know how to use array list? Array list works like this. Book. We will call it here books equal new array list slash book. Shabab, I want you to think with me. So th this line which I created, Shabab, this line called array list. Yeah, array list is actually like a database. When you store your, like a box, you put things in. Yeah, you have a box and you put objects inside. So we created a, a box or array list. We call it box. 
What is the type? That is book. Okay? And then we said available list, uh, new available list, and we selected book and data. Now we can start creating books. Yeah? We we'll use one variable. This is your idea. We we'll create one variable. We we'll call it just only book. Okay? Book equal book. What the type of the book is type book? Yeah, we'll create something called book. Okay, equal new or just store this one like this book one variables. Okay, now we can say book equal new book. And let's add to this book title Java 1. The author is Ali. Okay? Okay? So what we did so far, we created a storage. We call it books, which type a playlist. And, and then, Started a variable called book lowercase. We created one book. Now we can add the book to the store. How we can add it to that to that box or to that store? We can easily use the name of the store, which our box. Yeah, box. Which actually this one. And then we'll add the method called add book. Book. Okay, now let's do one thing more. Create another book down here. Same variable, same variable. And we'll call it Linux operating system. Linux fundamentals or something. And the author is Ibrahim. Let's make them all Arabs so maybe they can. Now what do we have? What do we have now? We have in the memory of our computer a storage called books. Yes. Okay? And we created two copies, one book one, or one book uh, Java one, and one book Java two. And we added these two to that storage which box. Yeah? Now, how I can display it? I can use for loop to go through this one and display it. Okay? In fact, I can use here a for loop to ask the user to enter the book title, the author, create a book, add it uh, to the store, and continue the loop until he enters zero and stop. Yeah? So you can create endless number of books using the same variable. I'm using the variable book. Let's do the for loop. The for loop will look a little bit different in this case. So we will say for book and we will call this one B yeah in the group box. This little bit strange to you, maybe. And I can say system dot out dot brand ln b dot get title. I will explain it, Shabab. I know maybe it's confusing. Maybe it's confusing. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, more I think. Only thing I'm worried about is I think yeah our, our, our realist our list this realist is Uh, 
Did we call it Pokim? Yes, we did call it Mashir. Okay, let me do one thing. Where is my code? Did we save this one? Yes, we did. I think the one I did for you last time. Yeah, here's it. Yeah, okay. This is the one I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I want. I need to import. Sorry, sorry. You need to import the array list one. So let me go back here. Where is our uh, today one? Here is lecture five. Yeah. So let's do this because we need to import the array list. That's the only thing we need. Very good. So now we should be ready for the first one. Oh, working perfect. Now the only thing I need to maybe make it looks better, which I can see here, title column space plus, yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. So, now, This is the more efficient way to do it. You cannot continue creating book one, book two, book three, book four, book five. This way we use only one variable to create multiple objects, and every time we create object, we store it. And then we can retrieve it later. Yeah. How do you do it? This is where we define it, see? It says book. Book. This is the type of that B. The type of B is book. And this is an object of the class book. So he's the so he's a string type. Sorry? No, B no, B is an object of the class book. Everything in that object. Everything in that object? Yeah. Because we 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 didn't call it string, we call it book. But we displaying only the title. Displaying the title is is not really the object. It's just one component of the title. So we what we did we dis, we declared this one as a book object, and then here we said from that object B, get me only the title. Yeah. And, uh, does that mean that B is equal to the whole array, or does B keep B is for only individual one book? Now this loop here, this is a different way of doing the for loop. Uh, by the way, this is a new in, in Java. Wasn't there some time ago. Uh, and this one, how it works, usually for loop, you say for i yeah. equals zero or one semicolon, y i less than whatever. Now this one saying, you have an array list <coughs> called, called box, okay? Go through that array list. Every time you find the book, call it B. Name it B. So this B changed from being book one to book two to book three to book four. Every time the loop goes in, the B becomes a specific object of that stack of list of, of components. So that's how it works. So this is the for loop. The for loop say, go through the whole books array and take the first one, call it B, do something with it, come back, take the second one, call it B, and do something with it, and come back, and continue until the end of that list of objects. So B is a variable that's represented by the different objects inside the class of objects. Yes, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's, that's the, the, the proper way of dealing with objects Change the 
Like you have a stack of books. You take the first one, that's B. You put it aside, take the second one, the second one became B now. Okay? Then you take the third one, the third one B. So this B change, which one you're dealing with at that moment, that's the B. It's a stack of, of books. Similar thing in the database. Like if you look at your student uh, record, there are 20 students in this class, for example. <coughs> when I'm dealing with the first one, that student, yeah, I'm dealing with students. But that student, the first, go to this one. Now I finished with the first one, I'm dealing with the grade of the second one. Now I'm dealing with students. Yeah, but this is the second student. I replaced the data. So this is the way it works. You need to manage the memory because you cannot keep duplicating objects every time you do the data. You need to use one to reference the existing one to make sense. Yes. Uh, now, uh, Say find me the book that has the title job. So what we will do, we go through this loop, we add if statement here, we say if B give title equal whatever the user enter there, then display. Otherwise, don't display. Go into the next one. And this way you can search data inside the stack list. So you can give an individual book. Yes. Wouldn't that require the, the, the user input to be exactly the same as the, the string that got the title? So if you use cat Java lowercase, it won't yeah. recognize it. Yeah, you can use the, the method we will use that when you do deal with searching string. When you get a string, you convert it to uppercase or lowercase, yeah. the user input. And then when you, when you retrieve data, convert it to lowercase. And compare lowercase with lowercase. And is there a way to find like partial you can compare the same yes. Java as the exactly. Java. There's something called contains. If you use the word contains, it's any part of that text. So you see jar, jar, jar. It's and the, the hundred percent. And, the and there's other method called keywords. Keywords means searching for some keywords related to that. But the most common is contains. Contains allow the user to enter any part of that text. Say Java introduction, start introduction, all the introduction is done. Introduction to then your Java will come as a DAX to Is there a way you can add an option? So like when you buy the books you want, right? When you search up and it's like, oh you can read labels of Java, this is the index of it, this is the zero is the array, the first array, the second part of the array, the third part of the array, so you can just add other numbers, right? Is there a way you can make
الله شكلكم تقول لي يس يس عشان تريد تروحها والله كلنا مش تعبانين الحمد لله الله يبارك فيك بعد اذنك ممكن تبعث اللينك